Good morning. Must God send again for the king of Babylon? Our reading is at Jeremiah 43, verses 8 to 13. Then the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah in Tanpane, saying, Take large stones in your hand and hide them in the sight of the men of Judah, in the clay and the brick courtyard, which is at the entrance to Pharaoh's house in Tanpane, and say to them, Thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, Behold, I will send and bring Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, my servant, and will set his throne above these stones that I have hidden. And he will spread his royal pavilion over them. When he comes, he shall strike the land of Egypt and deliver to death those appointed for death, and to captivity those appointed for captivity, and to the sword those appointed for the sword. I will kindle a fire in the houses of the gods of Egypt, and he shall burn them and carry them away captive, and he shall array himself with the land of Egypt, as a shepherd puts on his garment, and he shall go out from there in peace. He shall also break the sacred pillars of Beth Shemesh that are in the land of Egypt, and the houses of the gods of the Egyptians he shall burn with fire. So let's remember why God has overturned the kingdom of Judah and eliminated or carried off into captivity most of the people. The people were in rebellion against him, and he determined he would eliminate the influence of the apostate king, princes, prophets, leaders there, the priests, he was just going to sweep them all aside. So these bad influencers were either killed or carried away by Nebuchadnezzar. And the good thing for the nation was this took their influence away, and so it opened the way for a new crop of humbled, godly, uh, consecrated people to take reins of leadership in those different categories. Remember, those things were there for the purpose of upbuilding the nation spiritually, but they'd all become corrupted. And at the same time, there was another group of people who were in hiding or away on the edges of the kingdom. And when the Babylonians left, these guys came out of the bushes, out of hiding, and Johanan and his captains were among those. And as it's turned out, they've sort of come up and, and forced themselves forward as, as leaders now. But it turns out that they're as affected with the spirit of rebellion as the previous ones that were killed or carried away to captivity in Babylon. So now they've taken the people down to Egypt in direct contradiction to God's instruction. And God is telling them that they too are going to be subject to his strong discipline. They will not escape him by going to Egypt or anywhere else. They're going to be subject to his strong discipline. And this is, this is also kind of an indirect call, at least to them, to repent. You can't escape God. You can't just go to a different place where God's going to ignore you or forget about you. He's got his eye on all things. So God is going to bring these people from Egypt, if that's what it takes, to help them come into line. Oh, God is mercifully working for everybody to come to him, even the stubborn ones. And you and I might know a lot about that, seeing as how probably you and I are among the very stubborn. Let's pray together. Dear Father in heaven, you have many means of addressing, approaching your people and addressing their spiritual needs even to send to the king of Babylon and have him come and chase these people down all the way over in Egypt. So if that's what it takes, Lord, for some of them to be in the kingdom, then so be it. Work for us, Lord. Work for our hearts. Help us to be right. Lead us onto your pathway. Thank you for hearing our prayer today. In Jesus' name, amen. So God's even going to send and bring Nebuchadnezzar back from Babylon, if that's what it takes, to discipline and even to help his people. Something to keep in mind. Have a wonderful day serving the Lord Jesus.